dementia researcher with a blog and a rating. As we embark on the holy month of Ramadan, I can't help but wonder, was there a deeper scientific reason behind fasting? Perhaps a reason that could not be explained at the time. Whether you are Muslim or not, the benefits of intermittent fasting are evident through new and ongoing research. Some of the most renowned doctors promote fasting, all with a slightly different lens based on their area of interest. For example, Dr. Ethan Wise discusses the advantages to cardiological health and weight loss, Dr. Rahul Jandial discusses the benefits in terms of increasing your brain's natural growth factor and improving cognition. Dr. Jason Fung is the world leading expert on intermittent fasting and low carb diets, and he discusses a broad range of advantages to this practice from regulating hormone levels to cellular repair. So we know there are so many benefits, but does fasting impact dementia onset? And if so, how? Typically, it is believed that we need to eat in order to maintain our function. Dr. Jason Fung denies this claim by stating that the brain is a vital organ and brain power will be preserved beyond everything else and may even be exceeded in a fasting state. Think about Christmas Day. After you feast on a huge meal, do you really feel mentally sharp or do you feel a little tired and dull? Even in the animal world, we've all seen images of a lion experiencing that postprandial laziness after the maddest hunt. But does fasting actually improve mental abilities? Studies have shown that intermittent fasting's impacts on glucose metabolism can have benefits in terms of neural resistance. Certain ketones that are expressed only when a person is fasting can stimulate the production of BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor, a brain-derived hormone, which is a key factor in increasing brain power. Fasting does other things too, such as decreasing your glucose and regulating your insulin, thus in turn producing counter-regulatory hormones and stimulating your sympathetic nervous system. This will result in more noradrenaline, which will make you more focused and better able to concentrate. This optimizes a lot of things in terms of neuroplasticity, neurogenesis, and neuron resistance. In order to see some of these benefits, the fasting period needs to be long enough to undergo the metabolic switch from glucose to ketones. Typically, this is around 14 to 16 hours. There are additional processes that occur during fasting known as autophagy and mitophagy. Autophagy is the process of intracellular recycling where your body breaks down old subcellular parts. Then, when you eat again, you are able to successfully rebuild these proteins. This is a process of regeneration and rejuvenation. When this is applied to mitochondria, this is known as mitophagy. It is the mitophagy that could be playing a role in increasing the available energy to the brain, which is a key factor in diseases such as dementia. There are lots of studies out there that show that fasting can actually increase the resistance of neurons against damage. And there are other studies that suggest that you can cleanse your brain of some of the harmful proteins that are accumulating in Alzheimer's disease. Alternate daily fasting has been shown to increase heat shock protein 70 and this helps to clear tau and amyloid proteins which are toxic to the brain and accumulate in Alzheimer's disease. The great scholars and philosophers of the ancient Greek era all fasted to clarify their thoughts and improve their perspective abilities. Fasting is an important practice in Buddhism and Hinduism alike. Allowing your body an extended period without consumption could provide internal cleansing and rejuvenation. Is it worth a try? Thank you for listening. Join the Dementia Research bloggers and share your own views.